Hi, and welcome back. This is my porcelain palette, and there's a lot of watercolors in here. I have, for your sake and my own, swatched out every single watercolor pan or tube that I own. I'd say, and tubes. I had to use an A piece of A3 paper to fit them all on here. And there's a reason why I haven't put the names on here. Um, because as you see, they all look pretty much good. Or the same ish. At least of the first kind. I'm sorry, there's a little bit of smudging over here. I dropped a pan on uh, a pan set uh, on on there while paint was still wet, so it's smeared. And over here, I got a little bit of a the the blue bled into the the yellow ochre next to it. But by and large, it went quite well. There are some stars here. And all the ones that has a star, there has been a white that I didn't swatch. It doesn't make sense to swatch white paint on white paper, so I skipped those. And here there are two stars, and that's because there was a black and a white that I didn't swatch. I got them, but uh, I didn't want to unpack the black just for swatching this and then never to use it again. It, it stayed wrapped up as it is. The basis of, of this video was that I wanted to take three student grade paints and compare them. And I swatched them out kind of like this, except way fewer, of course. And uh, they pretty much all look the same, and I thought, well, there goes my comparison video. And uh, I continued on that sheet of paper, which I think I tossed. Um, just for the fun, I added more colors. I took some of my professional colors, the artist grade ones, and added to it and was kind of surprised how how little difference there seemed to be. Um, and then I was thinking, well, this this is fun and interesting and annoying all at the same time. I'm trying to see if I can find that piece of paper now. I can't. Anyways, um, so here is the big swatch of everything I own. Turned out I have 19 different kinds of watercolor. And I know what these are, I numbered them. Uh, but let's see if you can spot which ones are the student grade. Which ones are the artist grades? Which ones are the low, 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 low budget ones? And which ones are kind of in the middle? Can you spot, for instance, the core or the Daniel Smith colors somewhere here? It's a mixture of everything. They're all here. The good, the bad, the terrible, and everything in between. So, uh, yeah. I'll reveal one for you, because that's no secret. I only own one pan of Old Holland, and that's number four. That's because it is a... Um, it's a special pigment in there. It's a vine black and it only old holland makes that pure and i was curious about some blacks so i bought that one old holland is, is very expensive it is uh, same level as core except they don't make any any trial sets or anything that makes them a little more affordable they they're just crazy expensive and i haven't felt convinced that i need to buy old holland <laughs> Um, so yeah, what I'm thinking is sometimes you see people do review videos of stuff. And um, 
when it comes to paints, and this is both watercolors, oil paints, and the um, acrylics, and probably a few more things. It is fairly easy to make a swatch like this look good. It's just a matter of putting on enough paint and let it dry. Then it looks great. Or not. It depends on how you do it. You see, there's a couple of swatches over here that uh, those two maybe doesn't look fantastic. If you don't allow the, the paint to, to mix in with the water very well and you don't get very much pigment on there, it might not look so fantastic on a swatch. Um, so I have seen sometimes some reviews where I'm thinking, oh, I know this product. It is either better or worse than than what it looks like on the swatch. And so I think you can represent or misrepresent any given paint product by just making blob swatches like the, this. Um, now you had a, some time to look at it and um, see if you can, how surprised you get when I tell you what is what, because I got a list here. Number one up here is Van Gogh from Royal Talents. It's a student grade line and I added maybe a bit too much water here, so at least on some of them, so we got some drying rims. And next to it, swatched a little nicer, is all the colors I got from Senalier, their L'Aquarelle artist line. And uh, here again, one of them I put on too much water. I think it's uh, indigo. But all the others look okay. Here is my Mary Blue. I got only those five colors. I got five tubes. And the old Holland. And number five is Schmincke Horadam. That is their artist grade paint. And this the, this didn't doesn't look very good because I didn't get very much pigment on. I've picked uh, tried to, to kind of rub the the pans the same uh, all the way around. Number six is Golden Core, and they all look nice. Number seven is another Royal Talents. This is the Rembrandt colors I, that I own, and there's not a huge difference. They look a little better than the, the Van Gogh, but yeah, I tell you, the swatch I did yesterday, they look nearly identical. I If I had like put the two ultramarine beside each other, I couldn't have told them apart uh, if, if people had mixed them up for me. This here is my second cheapest watercolor. This is some cakes from Major Brushes and it's actually a terrible watercolor but it looks great when it's represented like this minus the smear but look they don't bind to the paper those are terrible colors it's also the worst ones I got number nine is Prima Marketing Let's see they don't smear they stay where they are they should all stay where they are um, so Way better paint than, than that one. I also paid some more for that. Number 10 is one of my favorites or my go-to set. This is my sketchbox uh, from Winston Newton. This is the, the artist paints. And some of them turn out better than others. I got a little bit of a problem with my Viridian still. Um, and Potter's Pink is also not the strongest color of them all. Over here we got something that might not look fantastic. There's a pink there, purplish pink, that looks terrible. That's an expensive cobalt violet. <laughs> and this is my Daniel Smith colors. And they might not look fantastic right there, but they, they are really good paints, except for that cobalt violet that is actually quite terrible. 
Number 12 is my cheapest. This is Belluno. I think it's made in Italy, but I'm not sure. The noun name sounds. But, and even that one is better than the brushes, the major brushes up here. This is one of those that is in the pan here. There's these ones here, I believe. No, wait, here, these three. My, uh, there's 12 colors, but one is a white, so I didn't squeeze that out. Um, and they look great on camera, but in real life, you can tell they're kind of a little dull and they, they're quite thick. Part of that is because I took fresh paint um, and they don't mix well with the water. It's like painting with glue, actually. This set cost me like two euros for the 12 colors. And they look good, but they are so annoying when you paint with them. It, it, it just glues to your brush, and it's really difficult to get a nice, even, transparent layer. Number 13 is White Knights. Looks good. Is good. A medium of the range in terms of price. 14 is Ateza. There are two paints, and that is the next set here. Well, starts here and goes all the way over here. 24 of them minus the white. So I think there's 23, 24, uh, 23 paints here. So, um, and again, looks very opaque, but it was also um, hard to, to water them down when I got them stuck together like that. But it can be mixed up a little better. I, I want to do a new review of that with those. Um, it's not ever going to be my favorite paints, but let's give them another shot. 15. That is Schmincke Academy. That is the... Um, these here are the student grade paints uh, of Schmincke, and that is the professional. These are a little paler than the the Horridum professional line, but not by much. They lift slightly less readily out of the pan than, than the professional. This one, number 16, is the six colors I got from Coronor Mondelus in pans. Mondelus is normally known to be their watercolor pencils, but it is also their watercolor pants. And I got them lined up here with, along with my Schmincke Academy paints. And um, the first time I swatched them, I wasn't very impressed, but I want to paint with them some more and see what I think. They're in that tin because that was the only place there was one. 17 is another budget brand. This is Maurice from, it's a Chinese brand. And um, they're like 10 euros for 12 colors. And not too bad considered the price, but the Marie, the Ateza and the Balloon, Balloon uh, they all were fresh paint out of the tubes here. Here's the Marie's. They go start here and then in this center circle here. So fresh paints, they always look kind of dense, especially when you just have a little space to, to paint them onto. Number 18 is one of the two kinds where I own all the colors. This is Winston Newton Cotman. And um, it doesn't look like there's much difference between the Cotman and the sketchbox, uh, the artist grade ones. But there is one you've paint with them because you need to scrub up a lot more paint to get the same coverage and intensity with these than you do with the professionals. And the same goes actually for the the Academy compared to the Horadam because there's more fillers in it. The cheaper your paint gets, the more fillers is in there and you more, the more paint you need actually to, to make a good cover. 
And the last one, number 19, is from Mozart. And it's the Komorebi Japanese paints. And they are okay, but not highly pigmented. I had to scrub quite a lot to get this amount of paint out of the pans. They're a little special because they got these six neon colors and they got another, what, seven? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven uh, metallic colors. I'll show you. So that that is that that that's my kind of my 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 statement with this is that a swatch chart in itself, especially if it's small blobs like this, doesn't really tell you much about the paint. Um, the, that one only looks terrible because I smudged it. If I had left it alone, it, it would have looked good. I could probably even make a painting that on camera would look, look okay. And that is probably the one I have the biggest problem with. I haven't seen anybody do a review of exactly that set, but I've seen some do reviews of some sets that is similar to this. I'm quite sure it came comes out of the same factory. And they go, oh, this is great, and da da da, and fantastic, and it looks good, but it's not good. I mean, watercolors, you're not supposed to rub them off the paper once you painted them on there. Plus, it was so, th this paint is so hard to scrub out of the pan. I had to pre soak it, and still, after five minutes, I still had to scrub real hard to get any pigment out of there. And it's not that I want to bum anybody out for their reviews and stuff, but this is why I, I prefer reviews where people are doing more than just watching them out. They, most of the people that I watch doing reviews and swatches, they do test their colors more thoroughly, like how far does it go and how do they mix and all that. And that, that's really necessary because even though they look the same on a swatch sheet like that, like this, there's a huge difference from this to how they feel when you work with them. There are some that are an utter delight, like the Sennelier, for instance. I just touch my, my brush, wet brush to the pan and I get got pigment. I don't have to sit there and scrub at it. I just touch it and paint. Whereas the the that is extreme, but the cutman, for instance, is is one where I have to soak the pan quite well before it starts to come off, and and I don't get very much pigment in each touch. It takes a little more work and a few more layers to to work with cutman. So um, looks can deceive. And, and I think that's kind of my point, is uh, if you were going to pick a, a kind of color from a review, make sure that it is not just a dollop of paint on a piece of paper. Make sure that people are, are trying them out uh, and hear what they say and notice how much they, for instance, scrub at a pan to get paint out because um, it's uh, it's not enjoyable sitting there you want to paint and half the time you're just trying to get paint just touch <coughs> I'm sorry so yeah that that's pretty much what I want to say this time it was a, a fun thing and it's a uh, an interesting piece of paper this with all my colors and um, I can just say I don't need another cadmium yellow or a lemon yellow or another ultramarine or Prussian blue <laughs> I think they're in pretty much all of them um, so uh, yeah and May this is why I don't need any more watercolors and why I'm not jealous of anybody having more.
watercolors than me. I should have two or three more sets, but they are old and out of production, so it makes no sense adding them to this swatch sheet. So thank you all for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe, and I'll be back with something more w weird stuff. Take care. Bye-bye.